What is up there workforce? Chris here with work to game and I wanted to talk about what patch 4.57 means for the future of Final Fantasy 14. This is a big patch and for the fact that it has like that last digit, it's not 4.5 or 4.4, this could really change the absolute future. And we knew this patch was coming and so these are kind of thoughts that I've been thinking on for a while, but after watching the way this dropped today, how smooth it was, the fact that they migrated our servers over and all in one go, we had the world visit system working. It just works. On day one, I haven't seen anything about servers going down. Maybe there are people experiencing that. There are definitely wait times to visit certain servers, but that's not unheard of. That's just people taking advantage of the system. So it seems to be working intended as far as I can tell, at least across North America, with every player I've talked to, I've been sitting in streams all day when I wasn't playing, uh, as I was working and things like that. I've been in and out of streams and everything just seems to work. Uh, and so what does this mean? What does this change? Well, the world visit system inherently changes the way we can view open world content. Now all open world content is effectively data center wide. Now for the purpose of 5.0, we're not going to see any major changes in the way content was developed, I assume, because they would have had to known that this was going to come out and that this was going to come out at 4.57 and that it was going to work right from the get go. So I assume that at 5.0, it's going to be exactly like any other expansion. But by the time we get into 5.2, 5.3, when we start to talk about things like the relic grind, you look at Eureka, you look at the delays, the various technical issues they've had, imagine Eureka with a world visit system. Now you could either go with a Eureka open world, which I think a lot of people would enjoy, or if you want it to be instanced, rather than it be to an instance, you could have it be its own world. And then you literally just go visit that world. You go in and out at your pleasure, and basically all of... Aether would share a Eureka, and if that Eureka ever got full by some miracle of too many people playing, like on day one or like on a patch update, then once it's full, it could spin up a second server. Now that does beg the question, how do things work if I want to go join my friend? Oh, you're on, you know, you're on Eureka 1. I ended up getting put on Eureka 2. How do you join me? And so you have to say, okay, you're joining this party. There's not room for them. Would you like to migrate? So there's definitely some technical hurdles that they would have to solve, but it does give them the ability to consider this for 5.0. And if, if they've already finished too much of 5.0 to do this, definitely for 6.0. And these are the things that I would love to see them do. I mean, they've already said at FanFest that they would love to see data center-wide market boards. We see things like cross-world link shells, party finder being cross-world, all of these things moving us towards data center wide mega servers and it really could fix a lot of issues it could fix things like the need for pvp queues to be so long if you start to just seamlessly push the content data center wide with no ping no lag and no effort i don't have to put up a party finder for this if i queue for pvp it, it, i can already have a team that's made up of players from multiple servers that just queue seamlessly and, and many of these things already work. You could already have things like a static that runs across, but they have to know each other through some other method, a cross-world link shell, an off-game forum or website or something like that. But what if we have cross-world free companies? Now you're in a PVP free company that spans across multiple servers. The word server starts to become more and more abstract. It's basically tied to your housing, things like that. But you can see those things start to dissolve and break down. So the way this works could inherently change the way this game's developed from here on out. And if people are hoping for a Final Fantasy 16, 17, whatever you want to call that project, this is the kind of backbone that allows that to, instead of being a whole new relaunch of Final Fantasy XIV 2, you know, you can literally say, we totally rebuilt Final Fantasy XIV, and then we just slid it in. Now, they may have to slide it in through some form of a calamity, and a calamity would be a really great chance to go back and do things like rebuild the 2.0 zones. The 2.0 zones were amazing for what they had to do. They had to overcome so much going from 1.0 to 2.0, but they inherently lack things like flying, and the beast tribes don't have anything for gatherers, and, you know, there's all of these things that you would love to see them have, and more end game uses. And if you rebuilt them with today's market, with today's today's hardware, you know, you could literally rebuild the zones, change a few things to show where the calamity that, that causes all this has taken place, rebuild Ulda, rebuild things like this to make them function more like a Kugane where it's not so many load screens, it's not so fractured, and you could, you could literally 
you could totally change the way we play. And now, obviously, big parts of it would have to be stayed the same because they're not going to restructure 2.0 MSQ. So you'd have to replace all those quest givers. You'd have to redo things like that. But imagine if those beast tribes suddenly had a, you know, a level 50 beast tribe section. And then once you came back at higher level, oh, we have this stuff up on a plateau that once you're at level cap and can fly here, you can get to them. And that's how you go do the higher level version of the very same beast tribe. Um, imagine if that's where we unlock the ability to do gathering with the old world beast tribes. There, there could be so many cool things they do and all of it hinges on the fact that this game can make it into the future and seeing the way they ruled this out today, I am so impressed with Square, but more importantly, I think it really shows exactly what we can look forward to from here on out. Imagine if something like this had already been in place prior to Blue Mage coming out. Now, I know why they didn't release them at the same time, because we weren't guaranteed this smooth of a launch, but imagine how much that would have changed Blue Mage. Imagine if Blue Mage was just in open worlds that were just filled to capacity. So everywhere you went, there were Blue Mages, and if you got on at an odd hour, it just merged servers, and if you got on at a really congested hour, it just split them back off. And that was all happening either seamlessly or through prompts where it says, hey, we notice yours is getting a little full. Would you like to go somewhere less full? Or hey, we notice yours is really emptied out. Would you like to migrate to a more populated version of this zone? And it just teleports you to the same coordinates. Uh, it, this is absolutely a game changer. And I have no idea where it stops from here. I have no idea what things this allows them to do on the back end. But I do know that the size of this patch, the fact that I had to download it this morning, and, the, and the, the contents of this patch, the size of what this changes for the game, are not necessarily seen today. Yes, we can jump server to server and take advantage of different market board fluctuations, and we can go visit friends, and we can see other housing districts, and we can now do maps together and all that. But those are all small potatoes compared to what this offers long term. What this allows them to do as we start to talk about things like migrate to a different world because of X. When your world fills, can we have Baomeng 1 and Baomeng 2? Can we just spin up 2 whenever 1 gets full? Can we do this to increase server stability not only by having players opt into switching, but by actually handling it for them and seamlessly and you don't see it it's all imaginary and behind the scenes these are the kind of steps that give them those technical capabilities right now you still have to go through the main aetherites right so that you have to go to these very defined places to jump servers but what if that becomes any aetherite what if that becomes if you can do it from your aetherite screen from basically a duty finder screen there is an incredible amount of potential here, and I, I would love to know what you guys would love to do with it. What what features do you think they could build on this next? What features do you think this is going to change? Is this stuff that scares you? Are you going to lose your server identity? Is this going to crush the, the, you know, the monopoly that you had on a certain market? Is this going to damage the RP community because they're not going to be able to hide off on their RP server where they can stick to themselves, but they're instead going to be everywhere? What are, are the things you're excited about? What are the fears when it comes to what patch 4.57 has added to the game and how it has inherently changed Final Fantasy XIV for the long term every bit as much as something like an expansion or like jump potions or like duty finders and, and all of these individual features, some of which have been around for a very long time, all the way back as far as you can remember, and some of them being more recent changes where they really do change the game and there isn't any going back. My name is Chris with work to game I hope that you guys are having a fantastic day. I hope you're enjoying the world visit system. I think it's really neat. Go to Gridania, Limza, Ulda, right click on that big Aetherite and just go visit other worlds. Just go see what all the hype is about. Definitely go check the market boards for items that maybe you've been looking for for a while that are always way too high priced. See if there's fluctuation in it. You know, go visit other housing districts. Go try hunts on another server. Go just do something to engage with this content because this is something that is opening up the ability to do things that we've never done before, and I'm really excited about it. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Chris with work to game and I'll see you next time. Oh, hello. Were you expecting somebody? Chuck-like? <laughs> well, I'll never tell where he is. Only that if you want to see your friend again, you should totally hit subscribe. And maybe even a thumbs up. Thumbs down don't make me happy. And when I'm not happy, something happens to Chuck. <laughs> I'm not joking. Goodbye. Subscribe.
I'm still here. I'm not going anywhere. See you next time.